Welcome to Grace for Dyslexia. Today we address support. This is podcast number two. Wendy is 16 years old. She has brown eyes and blonde hair. She plays field hockey for her school and she's a top forward. All of her life she has struggled to read. Even today she needs various tools to allow her to perform at school. Many of these tools are not obvious to her friends and classmates. When she was in elementary school, Wendy worked with a tutor for years on her reading. She learned about letters, sounds, words, and how to decode words effectively. But despite all of the help, she never came to be a very fluent or fast reader. Her reading is still slow next to her peers. It still takes an hour to read about 15 average pages of text. This adds huge amounts of time to her homework and pressure when asked to read it in school. Wendy always had people in her life who were there to help her. Besides her tutor whom she relied upon for so long, she also had two caring parents and a brother. She had friends who she confided in about her dyslexia. She found teachers at school who were willing to allow Wendy to have extra time to complete her work. She used her various tools to save time and gave her chances to learn in ways that were best for her. On one occasion, Wendy took a literature class which required a considerable amount of reading each day to get through all of the books and materials. Wendy took the class to challenge herself to read more. For her, this was going to be a huge challenge to keep the pace with the class. Wendy went to her teacher early in the class to address her dyslexia and to find out if this teacher would allow her to use her assistive tools. At first, the teacher was hesitant about accepting the use of the tools, thinking they were unfair to the other students. It became plain to Wendy she would have to prove her tools were not unfair, but just allowed her. So Wendy told her teacher, I want you to compare the first two assignments. The first she'd do without her tools, and the second with her tools. Then her teacher could decide if Wendy could use any tools. The teacher agreed. Wendy did her best on both assignments. She worked for four hours on the first just to get through the reading and then to write her response. On the second assignment she was able to complete the assignment in two hours. Wendy knew from her own judgment that assignment two was much better than assignment one. She went in to talk to her teacher about her work. He provided her some feedback about the content of both lessons first without any suggestions as to what was different. Wendy appreciated the feedback she could use in other lessons, both in reading and responding. He went on to say that the first assignment was not as strong as, or as well written as the second. Then he asked her, what was the difference for Wendy? She explained the amount of time the first took to read and that cut into the time to process and write an effective response. In the second assignment she used text-to-speech software to enhance her reading, cutting time and improving her overall comprehension. She then was able to use speech-to-text software with predictive language capabilities to write a response. This allowed Wendy the opportunity to be more careful in word choice and editing her own work. The two tools saved her lots of time. Her teacher then said, Your second assignment is the quality of work I would expect, where assignment one is less than that. I also see that your work is original and reflects you. It is not noticeably different classmates in quality or quantity. That being said, yes, you may use your tools which will allow you to provide an example of your best work for each assignment. Wendy smiled at him and said, 
the word support has two morphemes. Sup, meaning to come from under, and port, meaning to carry. Thank you for your support and allowing my potential to be carried from under by use of assistive tools. Thank you for seeing that my work is better with these tools. That evening, at supper, she was sharing her experience with her parents and brother. She told them how she had allowed the teacher to compare pieces of work with and without assistive tools. Her mom commented how smart that was of her to suggest that. Her dad just listened attentively to what she was telling them. When she shared that the teacher agreed to let her use the tools, her parents were both quite surprised. First, this teacher was not known to be very willing to allow students any breaks. Second, they were a little shocked at Wendy's taking the initiative to address this with her teacher. Dad asked, What made you think to suggest to compare the two assignments? Wendy replied, I knew that I had to show him there is a difference in the quality of my work with assistive tools. As soon as he saw the quality of my work on the second assignment, he was convinced the tools were not unfair to others. Her mom chirps in, When did you become so brave with talking to teachers about your dyslexia? Wendy laughed. Mom and Dad, I have watched you talk with teachers all these years. I know what my needs are, and my tutor drilled them into me. It's just time for me to do this sort of thing for myself. But just know that without all the support I've gotten from you, my brother, teachers, and friends, I would not have the confidence to even speak to a teacher about anything. Her parents looked at each other, then looked back to Wendy, then they said in unison, Wendy, we are so proud of you. Inspired by Isaiah, chapter 25, verse 4. You have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in their distress, a shelter from the storm. Dyslexia can be a storm for many. So having support is so important. What is your shelter from the storm? Where do you find support? Grace for Dyslexia is a podcast dedicated to Christian encouragement for children and adults who have or are struggling with dyslexia. All stories in Grace for Dyslexia are fiction. Names, characters, places, and events are the product of the author's imagination. Any similarities to actual events, locales, or persons, living or dead, is coincidental.